Hi, it's Beth from the Somerset County Library and welcome to my kitchen. One of the great things about fall is all the seasonal cooking and the fall smells. So today I'm going to share with you some pumpkin recipes. So let's get started. First we're going to start out with a pumpkin bread. And then I also have a pumpkin sugar cookie. So to start out, I'm going to make a gluten-free pumpkin bread. And I have two cups of gluten-free flour. To that, I'm going to add a quarter cup of cornstarch, three quarter teaspoons of kosher salt, Teaspoon of baking powder. Now always double check you have the baking powder and not the soda. So I want one teaspoon of the powder. And half a teaspoon of the baking soda. And we also need half a teaspoon of, or two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. Now, if you don't have any pumpkin pie spice on hand, you can make your own. And all you need is some cinnamon, ground ginger, allspice, cloves, and nutmeg. So we need one teaspoon of cinnamon. Half a teaspoon of ground ginger. Quarter teaspoon of allspice. Quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. and an eighth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. So I'll mix that all together. As I said, I need two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice for my bread. Give that a little bit of a whisk. Okay, and to that I'm going to add two thirds a cup of white granulated sugar. And we also need two tablespoons of packed brown sugar. Okay, so we're going to just whisk that together, get rid of all the clumps. Okay, that looks pretty good. It smells pretty good too. Okay, next we need six tablespoons of unsalted butter. 
We need that at room temperature. Okay, we need to create a well in the middle of our dry ingredients. And then we're going to pour our all of our wet ingredients in. So I have my six tablespoons of butter there. I need two eggs. I'm just going to lightly whisk those, take out my shell. two-thirds cups of buttermilk and I like to substitute plain yogurt for the buttermilk you get the flavor of the buttermilk and it keeps the bread nice and moist and then five ounces of pumpkin butter. You can use homemade pumpkin butter or you can use store-bought and I can show you later how to make homemade pumpkin butter. It's real easy. In here. See how much I have in here. Might have just been five ounces. Okay. I'm definitely going to have to make some more pumpkin butter before I make the cookies. Okay, and then we mix it all together. In the meantime, I've had my oven warming up to 350 degrees. I have a 9 by 5 inch loaf pan already prepared. And we'll just get this all mixed together. And we'll be ready to bake. I prepared my pan. I like to use a foil sleeve. It helps get the bread out of the pan later and it's nice to be able to present it. And I just sprayed it with some cooking spray. mixed all together.
we'll just spread it out. Okay, it's ready to go in the oven. And we're going to bake this for, let's see, 50 minutes. So I'll stick this in the oven and we'll be back in a while. So the pumpkin breads come out of the oven and it's cooling. We did the toothpick test, it came out clean, so it should be done in the middle. It feels pretty good. So that is going to cool a little bit longer. And in the meantime, I'm gonna make some more pumpkin butter. All right, so my recipe calls for 56 ounces of pumpkin butter, but I only have 30 ounces here, so I'm gonna cut everything in half. Do this in a heavy stock pot. So I get my pumpkin puree, and you want the pure pumpkin puree. You don't want the pumpkin pie puree because the pumpkin pie stuff has spices and everything added to it already. So you want the pure pumpkin puree. if you've grown pumpkins you can always roast your pumpkins and use that as well And to that, we want to add a quarter cup of maple syrup. Of our good Somerset County maple syrup. And then we need three ounces of apple juice. And a teaspoon of pumpkin spice. And eighth of a teaspoon of kosher salt. And we're going to put this on the simmer for about half an hour. We want this to reduce by half. It will depend on how much liquid is in your pumpkin puree. I'm going to put this on the stove and we'll check on it periodically. Make sure we stir it frequently. That'll help prevent the mixture from splattering. That's also why you want to use a large pot to help keep it from splattering. And so we'll try to reduce this about, about half. Um, it depends on how much moisture is in your pumpkin. And you get a nice consistency, let it get a little bit darker. And then we'll let it cool before we can use it for baking. If 
think that might be about the right consistency. You want to see. It's about right, so I think I'm going to turn off the heat and I'll just let it sit here and cool. So now we're going to make some maple iced pumpkin cutout sugar cookies. And in my bowl, I have two cups of, I'm using my gluten-free flour. To that, I am going to add three-fourths of a cup of sugar. Quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, and two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. And I'm just going to whisk those ingredients together. I'm going to make a well in the mid, mid, middle of going to make a well in the middle of my dry ingredients, and then go over to the mixer. So to my dry ingredients, I'm going to add eight tablespoons of butter at room temperature. There, then I'm going to mix also going to add four ounces of our pumpkin butter. Let me raise this up. So I mixed this until the ball started to form, and now I'm just going to take it and finish kneading it with my hands. Sometimes the best way to mix something is just to get your hands in there and get them dirty. So I'm just taking my hands and mixing everything through, get everything in there good. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's well mixed. Everything's mixed through. I'm 
All right, and then I'm gonna get set up and we'll start cutting out some cookies. Okay, so I have my dough mixed up. It's nice and smooth, and I'm just gonna take a portion of it and place between some wax paper. And we're going to roll this out to it's about a third of an inch. Cookie cutters. Yeah, this cute pumpkin. You can make whatever shape you want out of them. scraps we're going to save those and we're just going to re-roll them out and continue making our cookies and then put these on the cookie sheet about an inch apart scraps and re-roll them. So I have the first sheet of cookies ready to go in the oven. I have my oven pre-warmed at 350 degrees. I have a lined baking sheet. And I'm going to put these in for about 10 minutes. I'm just going to continue working through the dough and make up as many cookies as I can get. So the first pan of cookies has come out of the oven and you want them to be just like a little bit brown around the edges. So mine ended up taking a little bit longer than 10 minutes, so it'll, depending on your oven, how hot it is, just want that lightly brown around the edges. And now I'm going to let these cool on the pan for about 10 minutes and then I'll transfer them to a wire rack to finish cooling. So my the last of my cookies are cooling. And I'm going to go ahead and make the icing. So I'm going to start with a cup of confectioner sugar. You'll also see it called 10x or powdered sugar. And then two to four teaspoons of maple syrup. Let's start out with two and see what it looks like. I'm 
definitely needs more. Just take the missing and as these sit, the icing should harden up, and we'll have our maple iced cookies. So we found out that just confectioner's sugar and maple syrup doesn't make an icing, but if you add a little bit of milk to it, just do a little bit at a time so you don't get it too thin, then you'll get a nice icing that you can top your cookies with. And we'll let them sit for a bit, and they, then we'll have our maple glazed, our maple iced pumpkin cookies. And it has a nice light pumpkin flavor to it, nice light maple flavor, and it's a nice cookie. So, we'll see you next time.